morning, everybody. So this morning, uh, and that's a good thing, um, what Jackie's just brought up. Um, I also had an in, uh, interaction with a young man that works. Uh, we lost Chris. Um, and Chris went to be a um, crew leader for another crew. Uh, Derek got promoted to ops manager, and so they needed another crew leader to take Derek's spot. <coughs> so Rudy and... It was Rudy, Chris, and I, and uh, Chris got moved up to uh, to be the uh, crew leader for that shift. Uh, and we got this young man. He is 22 years old. Um, his name is Alexis, but everybody calls him Alex. He's a Hispanic kid. And uh, very good. Uh, got a good head on his shoulders going to college for exactly what he's doing now. Um, <laughs> and uh, hard worker, and uh, it was kind of funny because the other day uh, he found out that I was a pastor and he was uh, a Sunday school teacher, and he, he was doing the same thing. We had a valve that uh, blew a seal, and so we we're over there doing the cleanup, and he started talking, and uh, he's he's a Catholic, you know, he's Catholic, and he's like, well, you know, I was just wondering, you know, I don't go to Catholic mass all the time, but what is your church like? And I said, like no other. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I, I, uh, I told him, you know, uh, and he started asking questions like uh, probably the same person, you know, that you were talking to, Jack. He was just asking. And, and uh, so I answered questions and, uh, and everything. And, uh, and he, he really did. I mean, he listened with very attentive ears, you could tell. Uh, and uh, so, you know, God is using using us, you know, and uh, and it's like that sign says, our mission field starts here as soon as we walk out of this church, you know, so uh, <clears throat> every morning when we wake up, and uh, it's such a great thing to be able to share the gospel with somebody that's willing to know, you know, uh, and it's just, uh, and just to know that God opened that door for you to allow you to plant that seed or to help him along in his Christian growth, that's awesome. Yeah, because he just got saved. He said he just got saved in seventeen. So yeah, so he's a he's a newborn Christian. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's awesome. Who was that concert? Who was that? Ben Fuller. Yeah, Ben Fuller. He's from Virginia. And I was shocked. He said in Virginia, it's only two percent Christian. He's from Vermont. Why wow. Vermont? He said Virginia. Well, I said Virginia. Yeah, he's from Vermont. Vermont's up there with them liberal nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, when we went to Washington, there was hardly no churches. Yeah. It's another area. Yeah, when we went to Washington State, there was no churches up there in that area. I don't even well, remember no. if there was one there in Washington, Washington, Oregon. Yeah, in that area, we didn't see anything. Washington, either. That's where they uh, worshiped all of that. <laughs> Well, this morning, we are going to be uh, in chapter 11, uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, uh, and we're going to start seeing where Solomon goes off course, you know, with God's plan for him, you know. Um, last week, we talked about Solomon's great wealth, about, uh, you know, he had a uh, queen come and visit him and bring him wealth, and she was uh, had some questions for him and he answered all of her questions and all that was in her heart and uh, so uh, uh, she also took something home with her yes yeah, kind of showed Solomon's yeah kind of absolutely character yeah it did uh, and, uh, the, whole time. Uh, the way brother Rick explained it is very well put uh, she she did take something home with her, which also uh, gave a little bit of insight about uh, Solomon's character, and which kind of flows over in from uh, ten into eleven. So chapter ten into eleven, yep. which we're fixing to see here, uh, that uh, you know Solomon uh, heart turns away from God, you know, and uh, so uh, you know we. Uh, we thank uh, Solomon and all his splendor and all the things that he did and all his wisdom that God was uh, gave him. But you know we know that he uh, falls right in line with that Romans three twenty three. Right, we all fall short of the glory of God, and he was no he was <coughs> no exception. So uh, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to start reading there. Solomon's heart turns from the Lord. Uh, chapter eleven, verse one. It says, "But King Solomon loved many foreign women." 
And notice it said many. Mm -hmm. uh, it says uh, he loved many foreign women as well as the daughter of Pharaoh. Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, uh, and Hittites from the nations of whom the Lord had said the children of Israel, you shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts from their gods. Solomon clung to these in love, and he had 700 wives. <laughs> Did you hear that? 700 wives and uh, princesses and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart for it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God <clears throat> as was the heart of his father David for Solomon went after Astaroth the goddess of the Sidonians and after Milcom the uh, abomination of the of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not fully follow the Lord as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for, I guess it's Chemosh, Chemosh the Adam, abomination of the Moab, of Moab on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Malik, the abomination of the people of Ammonon. And he did likewise <clears throat> for all his foreign wives. He burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So <clears throat> the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days for the sake of your father David. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Now the Lord <clears throat> raised up an adversary against Solomon. Hadad, the Edomite, he was a decent, a descendant of the king in Edom. For it happened when David was in Edom and Joab, the commander of the army, had gone up to bury the slain after he had killed every male in Edom, because for six months Joab remained there with all Israel until he had cut down every male in Edom. That Hadad fled to go to Egypt, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him. Hadad was still a little child. Then they rose from Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them from Paran to, and came to Egypt. And the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave him a house, apportioned food for him, and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of the Pharaoh, so that he gave him as wife the sister of his own wife, that is, the sister of Queen Tapines. Ta uh, then <clears throat> the sister of Tapines bore him uh, Genebeth, the son who Tephines weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Genebeth was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. So when Hadad heard in Egypt that David rested in his father's <clears throat> and that Joab, the commander of the army, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, let me depart that I may go to my own country. When Pharaoh said to him, But what have you lacked with me that suddenly you seek to go to your own country? So he answered, Nothing, but do let me go anyway. 
and God raised up another adversary against him, Rezon, the son of uh, Alidia, who had fled from the, his lord Hadezer, king of Zobah. So he, he gathered him, uh, men to him and became captain over a band of raiders when David killed those of Zobah. And they went to Damascus and dwelt there and reigned in Damascus. He was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon beside the troubles that Hadad caused. And he had whored Israel and reigned over Syria. <clears throat> then Solomon's servant, Jeroboam, the son of Nebet, and <clears throat> Amiphrite, uh, Amiphrite <clears throat> from Zerida, <clears throat> whose mother's name was Zeru, Zer, yeah, Zeru, a widow also rebelled against the king, and that and this is what caused him to rebel against the king. Solomon had built the Milo and repaired the damages to the city of David, his father. The man, Jeroboam, was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon, seeing that the young man was in, industrious, made him the officer over all the labor force of the house of Joseph. Now it happened at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet, uh, what's that, Brother Rick? Do you know that one? Ahijah. Ahijah. Huh? Ahijah. Ahijah. Yeah. Ahijah the Shilamite, uh, Shilamite uh, met him on the way, and he had clothed himself with a new garment, and the two were alone in the field. Then uh, Ahijah took hold of the new garment that was on him and tore it into 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself 10 pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom of out of the hand of Solomon and will give 10 tribes to you, but he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because they have uh, forsaken me and worshipped Astaroth and the goddess of the Sidonians, uh, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, Milcom, the god of the people of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do what is right, in my eyes and keep my statutes and my judgments as did his father David. However, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand because I have made him ruler all, all the days of his life for the sake of my servant David, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom up out of his son's hand and give it to you, ten tribes, and to his son I will give one tribe, that my servant David may also have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself, to put my name there. So I will take you, and you shall reign over all your heart's desires, and you shall <clears throat> be king over Israel. Then it shall be, if you heed all that I command you, walk in my ways, and do what is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments as my servant David did, then I will be <clears throat> with you and build for you an enduring house as I built for David, and I will give Israel to you. And I will afflict the descendants of David because of, the, of this, but not forever. Solomon therefore sought to kill Jeroboam, but Jeroboam arose and fled to Egypt to uh, Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, <clears throat> all that he did and his wisdom are they not written in the book of Acts of Solomon. And the period that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. Then Solomon rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David in his father. And <clears throat> Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his place. Wow. Uh, lots of knowledge here, right? Yes. Where you wow. is in this chapter. So, uh, in the beginning of this chapter, where do we see that uh, Solomon made his his fatal error? 
the women he wanted. Yep. The women is attraction for foreign women, right? And their mm -hmm. gods, yep. right? And their their customs and courtesies. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Said he had uh, one too many, didn't he? <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, nine hundred. Yeah. No, uh, a thousand. Two hundred. Seven and three, right? Yeah, I yeah. think so. It was close to that. It's. Uh, I was trying to find it back here. Seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seven hundred wives, and princesses, and now, yeah, yeah, seven hundred wives and princesses and three hundred concubines. Mm -hmm. So, I find it hard to make one woman happy. All <laughs> seven hundred. Uh, I don't know how this man did it, but um, it was... Times were different. Yeah, most definitely. Women <laughs> were viewed differently. Absolutely. And you see here that Solomon loved, you know, foreign women, and there was two obvious problems with this, you know, and what were they? Can anybody tell me? They brought their foreign gods with them. Absolutely. They brought their foreign gods with them. First of all, they uh, he loved foreign women who worshipped other gods and brought pagan influences yeah. to Israel. And the fact that right. he intermixed with other area, other area foreign areas he was well, supposed to be involved in. And God commanded him not, not to, to, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It says, second, he loved many women, mm -hmm. rejecting God's plan from the beginning for one mm -hmm. man and one woman to become one flesh <clears throat> in marriage. <clears throat> right? Well, he knew this. God had given him wisdom. So that just proves that, you know, the, 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 the man that had all the wisdom in the world was still quite stupid at times. <laughs> you know, uh, let's see. So uh, if I get this to come up, Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6. Um, and, and I don't know why this... Okay, here it says, And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and marry and be joined with his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Mm -hmm. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Amen. Mm -hmm. Also in Genesis uh, chapter 2, verses 23 and 24, it says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. And therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined with his wife, mm -hmm. and they shall become one flesh. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these... Uh, mm -hmm. You know this uh, this command that God gave Solomon. He he denied totally, didn't he? Mm -hmm. You know, seven hundred princesses and and uh, and uh, three hundred wives. Three hundred. Yeah, seven hundred wives. Yeah. So, wow. Uh, also, God gave a, a a warning to all Israel not to intermarry uh, with these nations because they would what. They would corrupt, corrupt them. Right. Surely right. turn their hearts away right. from him, right? He told them. Right. He gave them a warning. Right. And it says, for all of Solomon's great wisdom, he did not have the wisdom to apply this simple command to his own life. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's <clears throat> you know, yeah. uh, when we look upon it and we read it in the Bible, we, we think, you know, wow, man, what an idiot. You know, God told him not to do that. But then we look at our own lives and examine mm -hmm. our own lives, and there's certain things that we do that right. God has told us not to do. And uh, we should be looking at our own lives. I know I know I do a lot of times whenever I realize I've done something that God didn't want me to do. I'm like, man, I'm an idiot. You know, Lord, why, why, why did I do that, you know? Uh, you know, so I'm not going to eat till next week the way I talk to her, <laughs> you know, or whatever, you know. Uh, so, uh, and I really love her cooking, you know. <laughs> but uh, it says pro uh, Solomon probably did what many of us do. Uh, he somehow thought that he would be uh, the exception. <laughs> 
uh, that he would escape the consequences of his sin. And despite seeing how it affected others, Solomon learned, or should have learned, that he was not the exception to the rule. Yeah, now his kids are going to pay for it. And exactly. Not only that, you know, like you said, uh, further generations. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and we see that today, don't we, Terry? Whenever you know, we see uh, some of the things that our parents or our grandparents taught our parents. It's not what our, you know, our generations now are teaching their kids. Uh, we see it like, for instance, we talked about the schools. And they're, not, they're not teaching the kids. At all. The schools are teaching the kids, and they're out yeah. of the school. Well, here's a, here's a, a, a little small example. Uh, Brother Terry, I mean, uh, Brother uh, Rick gave me that um, paper. It was like, uh, hey, can you read this cursive? And like Mary said, you know, uh, our son, you know, Brandon, they were the last to be taught cursive. I don't know, you know, we we learned cursive like second, third grade. You know, we were learning cursive and how to write cursive and stuff. And now they don't even teach it, you know. Uh, it's like driving a standard automobile, you know. Kids don't learn that nowadays, you know. And I grew up even driving all, a tractor. Even all yeah. the big rigs are shipped by computer now. Yeah, yeah, their their automatics are shipped by computer. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, not not all yet. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, all the new ones. Yeah. Uh, again, we see that uh, you know Solomon had these seven hundred wives and princesses and three hundred concubines. I wonder if he knew all their names. Oh, I'm sure he did. I, I'm sure he did. I mean, I I had a whole company of Marines, and I didn't know all of my Marines. Uh, I mean, I knew their faces, but I didn't know all of those names. You know, I know I knew what squad they were in or who they were under, but I didn't know all of those names. And, but, you know, because some of them were merely the seal to a contract. Absolutely. And some of them would come on the weekends and some of them were there all the time. Well, you know, so. I'm always talking about the women. Oh, you know, yes. Yeah. Between nations, uh, right. the king would send his daughter when she was considered a wife, and but I'm basically sure, she was a hostage. Right. And I'm sure that those uh, had a little bit more... Uh, leeway than the ones that didn't have, you know, that didn't come under a king or queen. Or and they were all kept in a <coughs> woman's compound. So. Yeah, uh, it says this is almost unbelievable the number of marriages, uh, number of marriage partners that he had. His wives were considered princesses, but his concubines were legal partners without the same standing as the wives, as Brother Rick was just talking about. So it says all said Solomon, uh, Solomon had far more marriage partners than any man could possibly give attention to. Uh, sexual attention or other attention, as this, uh, as this goes. It says, in this sense, a concubine was a legal mistress. Uh, many prominent men in the Old Testament had concubines. Uh, examples include Abraham, Jacob, Caleb, Saul, David, and Rehoboam. Significantly, the Bible never shows this kind of family life blessed by God. So these things were never blessed by God. I mean, God put it in there, one woman, one wife, and you can see that even these men of the Bible uh, straight from that. Uh, it says, we can say that Solomon had so many marriages and partners because he followed the bad example of his father David. He had many wives and concubines for himself as well. We notice that in 2 Samuel chapter 5. I think he had, what, seven? Uh, all together? I think it was seven. I remember how many? I want to say it was seven. I don't know. Uh, um, it says, uh, and David took more concubines and wives from Jerusalem after he had uh, come from Hebron. Also, uh, more sons and daughters were born to David. Now these are the names of those who were born in him, uh, to him in Jerusalem. Shammah, Shobab, uh, Nathan, Solomon, uh, Ib- Ibar, uh, Elisha, I guess Elisha, uh, Nepheg, Je- Jephia, um, Elishama, Alilia, and Elifolet. And we saw how his sons grew up. Yes, how his, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, we see here uh, also, um, it says that uh, 
about so a thousand wives. It says uh, when a man is unsatisfied with uh, with the woman God gave him, the problem is with him, not with his wife. It says one thousand women cannot satisfy the lust of a man. Solomon should have listened uh, to Proverbs chapter twenty seven verse twenty. Uh, where it says hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of a man are never satisfied. Uh, so, um, and it said that his wives turned his heart. How do you, how do, what does it mean by that? How his well, wives had, turned his heart. They had their, their ways, different ways from what mm-hmm. Israel had, and, and especially with the idols and stuff, their religion, but other ways too. I mean, I've, I've seen, you've probably seen it more than I have because I wasn't ever in, in Iraq or any of that stuff, but the different customs <coughs> that people have. I mean, in Germany, you walk in a bathroom, there might be a woman standing there or sitting there in an open deal. And right. You go right in and go do your thing too. Right. And other places, you don't have different customs like that. Right. <coughs> Turkey was one of them, uh, and it says, uh, and his wives turned away his uh, away his heart. So of course they did. Based on the Song of Solomon, we can say that at the first uh, at the first Solomon seemed to know uh, what true love was with one woman. Yet his subsequent history shows us that it is possible to be in that place and depart from it. It is not true to say that uh, love will keep us together because Solomon shows us that we can know true love and depart from it. It is better said that the blessing and power of God upon our obedience will keep us together. Um, So it says, uh, we don't know when Solomon added his second wife. Uh, when he did, it was easy for him to rationalize it. After all, the greatest king of Israel, his father David, had several wives. And <coughs> yet once he followed his father David into this departure from God's plan from the beginning, uh, it was easy for him to just what? Keep adding wives. <laughs> yeah. You know, so... Uh, we see that when Solomon got old, that his wives turned his heart from uh, to other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord anymore. Right? Uh, it says Solomon uh, is a contrast to those who did fully uh, follow the Lord. This uh, phrase is used in a positive sense of three men in the Old Testament: Joshua, Caleb, and Caleb, and and here of David. When Solomon was. Uh, conspicuous as someone who did not wholly follow the Lord. Uh, and we know this because uh, God had commanded him not to intermarry with this with these type of women. Uh, and he did so uh, you know flagrantly. Uh, so uh, but we know that we know that David did the same thing. So mm-hmm. like father, like son, right? Or what is it like? Yeah, isn't that what the saying goes? Yeah. Well, back then, it was probably prestige to have. Yeah, it's like Brother Rick was saying, you know, yeah. have many wives and everything, you know, and even uh, certain certain ranking members would have concubines. What it so that one that you were reading there said, it sounded like he just went down the street of Israel there and saw a beautiful woman. And that, I'll take told you. Him, yeah, told his guards yeah, no. to go get her and bring her to the... I'm Did sure there was some of that. Oh, uh, more than likely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to stop right there. Uh, uh, I know I was about to get down to where it says, however, I will not tear away the whole kingdom where God starts taking away the kingdom from Solomon. Uh, but uh, we'll stop right there where it says, however, I will not tear away the whole kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David. Uh, and we will stop right there and uh, pick up next week um, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11. Okay? So, uh, any questions or comments? No? Okay, good, good. Uh, good study. Just a perfect example. Of what it's a very good example today. study as to yeah. today. Uh, Brother Frank, will you close us in a word of prayer, sir? Sure.